Quantum atom theory is based on two simple ideas. The first is that the wave equation does not just predict what the wave function will be in the future, but that this process represents the forward passage of time itself, photon by photon, or moment by moment. The second idea is that Heisenberg's uncertainty principle is the same uncertainty that we have with any future event. From these two simple ideas, quantum mechanics can be explained in a way that exactly fits in with our everyday experience of nature and time, moving from a known past into an uncertain future. In this theory, energy equals mass times the speed of light squared, because light will radiate out in spheres of electromagnetic waves from its radius, forming a square of future probability. We live in a dynamically evolving universe of continuous change because of the probabilistic nature of the wave-particle duality of light. Only if light waves come in contact with an object will they form new photons of quantized energy that will have a unique position in space and time. In this theory, it is the inward absorption and outward emission of electromagnetic waves that continuously form the arrow of time and the geometry of space-time. If the light does not come in contact with an object, it will only have the momentum of its own wave function. The forward momentum of light is continuously creating a blank canvas for the observer that she or he can participate in. The atoms of the observer bond together and then collapse the wave function in unison, forming their own unique future position or reference frame in space and time. It is because the observer can choose when and where to collapse the wave function that we have free will. Life will create its own ripples in the fabric of space-time, forming its own broken symmetry of its own evolutionary path or timeline. It is because this process is at the same rate that light moves that the speed of light between the atoms will always be a universal constant, independent of the motion of the source. This can also explain why light is so beautiful when it strikes an object. It is because we are looking at a moment of pure creation of time and space. In this theory, there is no universal time, because the universe is made up of, of an infinite number of reference frames that have their own proper time relative to their momentum and position. Therefore, we are all in a unique position at the center of our own reference frame and can look back in time in all directions at the beauty of the stars. When we look down into the atoms, we can see time-dependent quantum mechanics when the atoms bond together, forming their own beauty of their own symmetry and geometry. But when we zoom in on an individual atom, we find time-independent quantum mechanics and there is no flow or arrow of time and all we have is the measurement problem. Each new photon can be measured either as a point in space over a period of time or as an area of space at a moment in time, but not as both. This is because the observer is always in the moment of now, collapsing the waves of light into new photons of energy that will only be relative to the wavelength of the light and the position and momentum of the observer. We have time dilation for an object accelerating towards the speed of light and gravitational time dilation around objects of great mass because the greater the momentum, the shorter the wavelength and the higher the frequency. The frequency of an accelerating object will increase relative to the received frequency that will therefore be reduced by the Renz factor. As the inward absorption and outward emission of electromagnetic radiation is reduced, the duration of a clock cycle will increase for the accelerating object and time will be measured to run more slowly in that reference frame. In this theory, at the quantum level of the atoms, the moment of now is created by a single photon-electron coupling creating a wave function of future possibilities. Even the individual atoms of the observer are radiating electromagnetic radiation continuously. The observer will fill this as the continuous flow of time and as the aging process on the level of everyday objects, the observer will see an infinite number of photon-electron couplings, creating a temporary image, moment by moment, or photon by photon. This is very difficult to visualize, 
But in this oil painting of a geisha girl walking through sunlight, the wave particle duality of light will collapse as she walks through the rays of light. She will collapse the wave function, creating her own future space time. In a similar way that we use sound waves to create our own music, we use light waves to create our own future space and time, formed by photons of quantized energy. The only way to see this happen directly by light is in the two slit experiment. When the waves reach the screen with the two slits, they will react with the electrons of the screen. This will collapse the wave particle duality of the light, creating new quantum particles in space and new moments in time. The part of the wave that does not come in contact with the screen will expand in all possible routes, going through both slits as two wave fronts. Interference between the waves will cause them to superimpose or cancel each other out. When these waves come in contact with the screen, they will collapse, creating, a quant creating quantum particles in space and time in the shape of an interference pattern. When the observer turns on a detector to determine which slit a photon passes through, the interference pattern will collapse. This is because to observe the photon we have to create a photon-electron coupling, collapsing each wavefront into a new quantum particle that will have its own position in space and time. If we turn the detector off, we remove the photon-electron coupling, and in time, the interference pattern will reform. Just like in Newton's first law of motion, the interference pattern will continue to maintain its state unless acted upon by an external force. We have Einstein's curvature of space-time because of the spherical shape of the quantum wave particle function. This is why we have pi in the equations representing the shape of the wave function in three-dimensional space-time. We also have pi in the equation for Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. This is why pi is an irrational number and keeps on going forever, just like time, never forming a regular pattern with all the properties of a random number, just like probability, except that each of its digits are known. There is always the same amount of even and odd numbers in the continuous sequence of pi. Just like if you continuously tossed a coin, you would create a sequence of numbers with the same amount of odd and even numbers, or heads and tails. The polarization of the light will be the same for the entire surface of the light sphere, creating quantum entanglement and the symmetry and geometry of space-time. In this theory, it is because the atoms can distort the geometry of space and time that we have electromagnetic fields. It is time variations within magnetic fields that act as a source for electric fields, and time varying electric fields is a source of the magnetic fields. When one field is changing in time, then a field of the other is induced. This will be relative to the position and momentum of the objects creating the time variation, the atoms themselves. The magnetic fields are always at right angles to the electric fields, forming the local space-time symmetry and geometry that will spiral out, creating the visual and mathematical patterns of our universe. The greater the angle in space, the greater the curvature of space-time, the stronger the electromagnetic field at that point in space and at that moment in time. This can be seen as sparks of light associated with static electricity. The atoms will even distort the geometry of space-time, creating electrostatic discharge in the form of lightning. In this theory, it is only logical that the wonders of modern electronics are based on the paradoxes of quantum mechanics. This is because electric charge is quantized and we generate electric power mainly by changing magnetic fields or moving a conductor through a magnetic field. This will distort the geometry of space and time leading to the electromagnetic induction of our own created space-time, in other words, electricity. We can see that the atoms form their own space-time geometry and symmetry because the curvature of space-time has left something behind in the curvature of solid objects. There is no straight lines in nature from the curvature of the moon to the bow of a tree to the growth rings of the tree itself. Everything will look within the diversity of nature we can see a continuous process of symmetry forming and breaking from seashells to spiral galaxies to the evolution of life itself. This process is formed by the momentum of light forming the arrow of time and the geometry 
of space-time. 